Hey, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry, and I'm the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. We're in the middle of a study on Matthew 24, and I want to continue to share some thoughts on verse 30 with you this evening. So I'm going to read the text. Uh, I'm going to read verses 29 and 30 for context sake, and we'll jump in here. So Matthew 24 and verse 29. But immediately after the tribulation of those days... The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will shake, uh, be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, we, we've demonstrated that this darkening of the sun, the falling of the stars, the moon not shedding its light was symbolic language, language of the destruction and overthrow of the old covenant kingdom of Judaism, Okay. And as a result of that, these nations would witness and to them would appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. In other words, the destruction of Jerusalem would indicate and it would signify that Jesus, the Son of Man, is now, was then, reigning in heaven. Okay? Let me back that up by a couple quotations from Don Bra uh, John Bray's book, Matthew 24, fulfilled. Listen to this. This is what Marcellus uh, Kick says in his book, in, Esch in Eschatology of Victory, page 137. The judgment upon Jerusalem was the sign of the fact that the Son of Man was reigning in heaven. There has been misunderstanding due to the reading of this verse, as some have thought it to be a sign in heaven. But this is not what the verse says. It says the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. The phrase in heaven defines the locality of the Son of Man, not the sign. A sign was not to appear in the heavens, but the destruction of Jerusalem was to indicate the rule of the Son of Man in heaven. And exactly what I just said, right? The destruction of Jerusalem, verse 29, signifies that the Son of Man was now reigning in heaven. Okay, now watch this. Let's look at another one. David Chilton from his book, The Great Tribulation, page 25. This one he says, At his ascension, he had come in the clouds of heaven to receive the kingdom from his father. The destruction of Jerusalem was the revelation of this fact. In AD 70, the tribes of Israel would see the destruction of the, uh, of the nations as the result of his having ascended to the throne of heaven to receive his kingdom. In other words, both of these men understand that the destruction and judgment of Old Covenant Jerusalem was the sign of it signified that Jesus had ascended to the right hand of the Father, that he now ruled and reigned in heaven as king over Israel. Now, that brings me to my point, which I made in the, in the last video that I want to try to, to, to build upon right now, is that if, if this really, if the judgment of Israel signified the ascension of Christ, well, that means that it signified the fulfillment of, of Psalm 2 and Psalm 110. Why? Because those are ascension texts. And what I'm going to demonstrate is that the, uh, those ascension texts, Psalm 2 and Psalm 10, 110, are couched in the context of the rule and reign of Messiah upon the throne in heaven and resulting in his judgment and overthrow of those who would come against him. In other words, his judgment upon Jerusalem, his judgment upon those who had opposed his reign. Okay? I'm going to bring this out uh, and try to demonstrate this in this video. Go with me to Psalm chapter 2. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to read a lot of text here, but it's important that we see the full context of these psalms. Psalm chapter 2. Why are the nations in an uproar? And the people devising a vain thing. The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. That is Messiah. Let us tear their feathers apart fetters apart, and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laugh. The Lord scoffs at them. He will uh, speak to them in his anger and terrify them in his fury saying, But as for me, I have installed my king upon my holy mountain. That's the ascension of Christ. I will surely tell the decree uh, of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will surely give you the nations as your inheritance and the very ends of the earth as your possession. Watch this. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall shatter them like earthenware. 
Break who? Shatter who? Those who had taken their stand and their, uh, against the Lord and against his Messiah. Those Messiah would shatter. He would break them like an earthenware. Watch this. Now, therefore, O kings, show discernment. Take warning, O judges of the earth. Worship the Lord with reverence and rejoicing with trembling. Do homage to the Son that he may uh, be not angry and you perish in the way for his wrath may soon be kindled. How blessed are all those who take refuge in him. In other words, the ascension of Christ in Psalm 2, okay? <laughs> the, the son of man in heaven would result in the judgment and the shattering of those who had come against him, those who had opposed his ascension, should they not repent. You see this? This is the context of Matthew 24. The judgment of Old Covenant Jerusalem was the revelation that Jesus had ascended, yes, but that his judgment has, had now come upon those who had opposed his rule and his reign. And that's why all the tribes of the earth will mourn. But we'll get to that in a minute. Go with me to Psalm 110. Let's take a look at this other text that um, was being fulfilled through or was fulfilled through the ascension of Christ, but was being um, was being realized through the destruction of Jerusalem. Psalm 110, a psalm of David. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The Lord will stretch forth your strong scepter from Zion, saying, rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will volunteer freely in the day of your power. In holy array from the womb of the, the dawn, your youth are to you as the dew. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are priests forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings in the day of his wrath. He will judge among the nations. He will fill them with corpses. He will shatter the chief men over a broad country. He will drink from the brook by the wayside. Therefore, he will lift up his head. See, again, in this ascension text, uh, denoting the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ, the result of that would be him making his enemies his footstool. Well, who were his enemies? Those who had stood against the Lord and his anointed, Psalm 2. Those who had um, not freely volunteered in the day of his wrath. Are you with me? This is what, this is the context of the ascension of Jesus Christ, of the enthronement of Christ. Yes, he would be enthroned. That was good news for Israel, but it was bad news for those who had rejected that rule and that reign. He would judge them. He would destroy them. He would shatter them like earthenware. He would judge them for refusing his sovereignty. And that is the point of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. Go back there with me. Jesus said, the judgment of old covenant Jerusalem, the falling of the, the stars, the darkening of the sun, the moon not shedding its light, etc., would be the sign that the Son of Man was now ruling and reigning in heaven in fulfillment of Psalm 2 and Psalm, Psalm 110. But the result of the Son of Man ruling and reigning in heaven in fulfillment of Psalm 2 and Psalm 110 was that he would judge his enemies. He would sit at the right hand of the Father, making all his enemies a footstool under his feet. And the revelation, sorry, and the, the judgment of Jerusalem in AD 70 was the sign it was the revelation to that nation that, yeah, this was the Messiah. He was ruling and reigning, just like Jesus and his disciples had, had said for 40 years. But now, through that judgment, was the, the manifestation, the true final sign that he had now come in judgment of those who had rejected him. Are you with me? And, and, and that is the, is the reason for the next phrase in Matthew 24, verse 30. And then shall all tribes of the earth mourn. Why? Because they understood that they were being judged. They understood that they had missed their Messiah. They had not submitted to his rule and reign. And now it was too late. Now he was coming in judgment. He was putting all enemies under his feet. And we'll pick that up next time. We'll share more on answers on eschatology. And listen. I'm away. I'm, I'm out of town on business for the rest of this week. This is my last video. So we'll pick this up next Monday and uh, we'll share more with you on Matthew 24, 30 and the, um, uh, the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven and all the tribes of the earth mourning. We'll see you next time.
Bye for now.